Hello YouTube, this is HDD Recovery Services. We got another case today that needs help and uh, this time it's a SanDisk 128 gigabyte cruiser. It's a big flash drive. Uh, so without further ado, I'll uh, connect this real quick to the USB extension cord that I have. plugged in as you can see and this end I'll just hook it up to uh, my computer nothing no signs of life doesn't do anything I'm gonna disconnect this we'll use it later I'm just gonna set it right here Okay, so uh, we get these quite often, as you've probably seen on our channel if you follow us. Uh, but I will give you a quick tour of uh, what usually happens with these devices. Either the controller can be fried, which is highly unlikely. SanDisk is really good quality flash drives. Um, connectors are really, really, really big problem with these flash drives. Any SanDisk cruiser that comes in. 8 times out of 10 is going to have a busted connector on it or something related to the connector. One of the pins or more than one of the pins will be separated from the board and that's, you um, can't really tell, this really is pretty, feels pretty solid. When I try to wiggle that uh, connector it's not moving. So in order to open it up there is usually a seam that runs uh, along the sides that will allow you to split the card like like here for example um, usually something like a small screwdriver okay or something that you would normally try to fix uh, or tighten up your glasses with would do don't shove a huge screwdriver in there and then it's gonna have this little carry case inside this is just a shell inside we got uh, the device itself so this is the controller okay SanDisk 8200278-6 this is a good controller because I don't believe it encrypts the information so if we had to go to drastic measures and recover data from the chip if there is no connector issue uh, it's a possibility so let's get this unwrapped from there oh wow okay I'll, this needs special attention what you see here is not your standard package BGA component that comes on flash drives this is not a BGA 100 this is not a BGA 152 this is actually EMMC memory component that's the first time I actually see one of those. Uh, the difference between this type of a controller, uh, sorry, this type of a component is that normally uh, you would find these guys on uh, mobile devices. This, um, this is a managed NAND. So it has memory as well as the controller built inside. Okay, so it's got a unique pinout. So the points where it mounts to the board are underneath this component. And they're in different places and different points of contact are designated to different signals so unlike uh, previously where we could use a socket reader like this for example um, to remove the BGA component and read it in these cases um, the variety of different pinouts and different uh, designs how those pins are positioned and what they represent uh, changes but let's not get into this this is a whole new topic and we will be shooting uh, some of the solutions that we offer for mobile devices very shortly we're actually in uh, beta testing right now so I'm excited about that uh, but let's uh, do some troubleshooting on this device and see what we need to do with it okay I'm I always pay attention to um, one thing and one thing only when it comes down to working on sand disks before we remove begin to remove anything 
I want to check the connector. So let me just drop the exposure down a little bit and I'm going to raise up the brightness slightly. You guys should be able to see this too right here. You see how this pin moves? Okay, well that pin needs to be attached to this little circuit circular point. This point is called via point. What that means is that that point uh, moves the circuit from the top to the opposite side to the bottom. So it connects to this capacitor right here. So, I mean, if we don't have to fix any of these guys here, which we probably do, let's have a look. No, that looks good. We probably don't have to fix these. So what we can do, the solution is actually really, really simple and uh, you'll see how, how simple it is once I get to work on it. So I got my soldering iron all prepped. Let me just uh, clean the tip up. Uh, we'll need flux, as always. And I got it right here. Just gonna dab a little bit on this pin. Ooh, some hair that stuck to it. Gotta clean this up. It's nasty. Yeah, this needs to go into some alcohol for cleanup. Okay, now that we got some, uh, what's it called, flux on there, let's heat this thing up a little bit. I'm gonna put a jumper wire, and I'm probably gonna use this coated wire as well. We'll use this jumper wire to uh, run from the top and meet us right here where it's supposed to come out and we'll just attach it to the spin to one of the sides of these of this uh, capacitor right there because that's the easiest position we don't even have to strip any of the coating now the only thing that I do need to uh, pay a little bit of attention to is to look if this leg connects to anything behind the connector and doesn't look like it does it's just the viewpoint of this, at this, uh, in this specific case. All right, so grab some tweezers. And grab some solder. Just right there. We don't obviously need that much of a wire hanging out. I'm just gonna cut it. But this is a coated wire, so what I will have to do is um, I'll have to tin it so that the end of it will need to be tinned because right now it's got a coating on it which isolates it okay once it's tinned it can be uh, soldered to anything so we just guide it right here real carefully this is an isolated wire so I don't really have to worry about anything shortening out even if it does come in contact with anything on this board uh, 
probably should have added a little bit of flux. Even though it's a lot. Boom. Right there. That's probably one of the fastest repairs I've ever seen happen here. And um, I have a really good feeling that it's going to work. I really do. Believe it or not, I do. So I always do this first. I connect it to the extension cord. And I'll even clip it here so it doesn't move. Okay, and I'm gonna go onto this side. Let me shut this light down. Turn on the, turn off the fume extractor, the soldering irons, and voila! Wow, look at that! The drivers are installing. Your device is ready for use. Well, let's see it's really is ready for use or not looks like it is I'm gonna click on open the folder just so you guys can see that it's there but I'm gonna have to find a way to blur out the contents because it is my customers data after all uh, there we go looks great done deal so if you guys need help with flash drives that don't work hit us up contact information is on the screen